Welcome to the show once again, sir. Thank you. And as we have conducted the interview on Breakfast Buzz before as well, this show, which you already know, is all about diversity and especially getting inclined and on the same page with our youth and the new Canadians, so to say it is. Now that we'll be publishing the interview in the newspaper as well, so here we are in conversation. Since we met last time, I would want to know you were a very new member of the parliament at that time and you were settling in mm -hmm. and you were gracious enough to give time and come to the studios. How do you find the job so far? Uh, it's, a, it's really exhilarating. It's a wonderful experience to serve as a member of parliament. You know, there's only 308 Canadians at one point in time that are privileged uh, to serve uh, our country in parliament. And one of the things I've learned is a lot more about my city. And I thought I knew a lot about the city of Mississauga through all the community work I had done for many years before getting elected. But what I've learned is just the great spirit of people that live here and, and, and want Canada to to do well and succeed and want to make a contribution and uh, it's been it's been an incredible honor to uh, to have served now almost a year uh, as the member of parliament for Mississauga Streetsville. On this note that there are 308 privileged people who get this opportunity that number is going to increase soon. Is it will it? after the next election. Yeah. And what would be the new number? The new number will be 338. There are going to be 30 new uh, ridings, uh, predominantly in Ontario, Alberta, and British Columbia, although I believe Quebec is also entitled, based on population, to three more seats. Um, so there will be more uh, members of Parliament. Um, I think that's good because, you know, we have some constituencies that are very, very large. My riding is higher than the average in population, but not like some of the other ridings we've seen where some members of parliament are representing 200,000 constituents. Brampton um, West for that matter. Brampton West, uh, my good friend Kyle Seaback. I mean, I don't know how you can serve effectively uh, 200,000 people. So we need, to, we need to divide those ridings up. Peel Region, uh, our catchment area, will probably get uh, um, two to three more ridings anyway between Mississauga and Brampton. And that's good because then it allows constituents to have um, a much more uh, personal relationship with their member of parliament. If you're representing 200,000 plus people, it's very tough to get the level of attention that citizens deserve from their members of parliament. So this is a good thing for the next election, the new seats. Very rightly so. Is it fitting well or sitting well with the current parliament? Or do they all agree on that? They are happy inwardly? Well, the opposition parties didn't support our bill That's what that, cr that created the new ridings. The NDP for different reasons and the Liberals for for different. The Liberals didn't think we should have any more seats. That was their position, and that's that's fair enough. What I'm not sure how. What was the reason given? Well, yeah, I don't know. You'd have to listen to various of their speakers. I, they, I guess their view was it was going to add more cost to the operation of the House of Commons. But one of the things people have to remember is I get a certain budget now based on the number of constituents that we represent. If my riding becomes smaller, if I have fewer constituents, part of my budget's going to go to that new riding to help that member of parliament serve uh, those uh, constituents. So the overall cost to run the House of Commons actually doesn't go up. We just take the money that we're spending now in 308 ridings and we spread it over 338 ridings. The only additional cost would be the salary, obviously, of the 30 uh, new MPs. Uh, and but the office staff for that matter. No, because our, no, our budgets are divided out, you see. Okay. Because okay. what's you, happening, a population of the point. country hasn't changed. It's just the population, instead of be, it being uh, represented by 308 members, it'll be represented by 338 members, which means the overall budget for all members of parliament will be spread out. So the current money we're spending now for 308 will be the same amount we spend for 338 for the running of our offices, which includes our staff costs. Okay. Having said that, Let's move over, switch over to your riding in particular, Mr. Saga Streetsville, that's for ma uh, the matter. What are you going to do with the disinterested youth who is not interested in politics at all? Mm. What plans do you have to bring them to the folds? 
Well, the most important thing I think I'm trying to do as a member of parliament is leading by example. Uh, let's remember, I started my interest in the community by being the chairman of Mayor Hazel McCallion's Youth Advisory Committee back in the mid-1980s. I got involved in my community. You're giving away your age. Because, well, because, <laughs> because, I, I, wanted to, because I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be involved. I wanted my city to be a better place. And so I hope... I say to young people that, you know, I started as, as a teenager being actively involved in my community and it did wind up leading to the day when I wound up being elected as, as a member of parliament. I take my role as a member of parliament to meet with constituents, whether they agree with me or not, to listen to what their concerns are and, and to find ways to, to get over problems and difficulties that we're, we're, we're having. Um, I have met with groups like the Dam Youth Drop-In Centre and listened to some of those groups and others that are working with young people today and are concerned. I'm spending a lot of time working on issues around jobs and prosperity uh, and future growth in the economy and foreign credentialing, recognizing credentials that people have from other countries that want to come, a lot of young immigrants that want to come to Canada and work, and how do we get them into the Canadian workforce as quickly as possible. So I've been spending a lot of time on those programs, and so I think leading by example, hopefully that's a way of getting more young people to say, being involved in politics is admirable, being involved in politics is giving something back to your community, and, uh, and I hope more young people will consider doing that in the future because we need them. How does your office in particular, because you do represent a very diverse writing. Um, am very I right true, yes, so? yeah, very true. How does your office get over the cultural issues? Like how do you communicate with different people and especially I would say from a senior point of view mm -hmm. and a youth point of view at the same time? Mm -hmm. Well, I do the best I can. Uh, obviously, when I'm out in the community and meeting with groups and individuals, um, we are we are holding, as an example, a, a seniors forum on April the 18th to talk about issues that seniors are concerned about. But, you know, when I first got elected and was able to put together my local office here in Streetsville that is open to serve the public, I was proud of the fact that I was able to recruit people to come and work in this office who between the group of them speak over 10 languages. And I think that's important that when our office is open to um, our constituents, they feel comfortable coming in. And even if English is a struggle for them, it's possible we may have someone working in my office that can communicate with them in their mother tongue. We don't have to do that. But I felt strongly that we have a number of predominant languages that are spoken in my writing that people would be more comfortable coming in to an MP's office and speaking in their mother tongue. And we try and do that where at all humanly possible, recognizing the diversity of this writing. Living in Canada, everybody eventually should know English, but at times it takes extra effort for some individuals to no grasp sure. that no and come at par, which is no fine yep. by all no, means. Absolutely. So helping out bridge that gap, I understand. One thing I would say, and I would say it on camera, that through the social networking sites also, you are very active and very involved. I have experienced that on a first-hand base. Mm -hmm. We set up the last interview through a social networking site. We there were you were, we did. 12 o'clock, right in the studios. Right. So you are very accessible. Yeah. Do you get a lot of questions through those modes by the youth in general? I'm very concerned about yeah, the youth. I, I'm, I'm I have very a daughter, amazed. I have a son yeah. who are college, university going, yeah. and I am concerned because yeah. they are losing interest. Yeah. Well, you know what the interesting thing is, is that I have used uh, predominantly Facebook and Twitter uh, to uh, make sure I am in regular communication with people that choose to be my friend or a follower and are interested in, in knowing what I'm doing and where I'm going and, and getting feedback from people on stuff. If that's one way of engaging more young people to have direct access to their member of parliament, because it's not filtered through somebody else, it comes directly to my BlackBerry. I manage, my own, I manage my own Facebook and, and Twitter pages. And, you know, sometimes the rhetoric is, is a little... You know, people get worked up about issues and sometimes those medium uh, aren't always the, 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 the most professional way of, of, of getting around an issue that someone's got a concern with. But when people get back to me through those, through those two uh, social media in particular, uh, I do my very best to keep up the interaction with them. See, I think being a member of Parliament, it is a seven day a week 
I wouldn't say 24 hours, but it's a seven day a week commitment. When you've decided to serve as a member of parliament, it's not nine to five Monday to Friday. It's not when the House of Commons isn't sitting during the summer months that you take off for two months of vacation. You have to be here and accessible and involved and listening to your constituents, meeting with community organizations and business associations and others, ratepayers associations, and making sure that they know that they can discuss issues with you, even if we agree to disagree. Um, we're only going to make a better parliament and we're only going to ever have better parliamentarians if people act that way and want to be engaged members of parliament. I ran for this job for a reason. I wanted to serve my community I've lived in my entire life. And it would be wrong for me to be a member of parliament, and, and very few members of parliament do this. I think most of them are very accessible want to do the right job at the right time. I just very strongly believe that we have all these great new ways of communicating with people. We should be using them. And that's why I use that accessibility through Facebook and Twitter as much as email and householders and the other things you have to send out to your constituents uh, as well. Not to put you down, but I do beg to differ that all member of Parliament are very accessible. I tend to disagree to that note, but let's move on. No. <laughs> so. Uh, having said that, that you are very involved in different communities, different groups, you put regular updates. What is the mode that we can bridge the back, uh, the gap, I'm sorry, in diverse communities that they, in, they mingle with each other and try to understand each other? Don't you think we are lacking there? Yeah, you know, I, I really look to leadership of groups like uh, the City of Mississauga, which um, the, the motto of the City of Mississauga is diversity, our strength. Uh, and Motto uh, is a different story, but practical is altogether yeah, a different right, ball you're right. Game. And, and here's, here's what I've been able to learn as a new member of Parliament by making sure I was getting out to as many events and, and meetings and functions of different diverse communities, is to learn more about those communities, what's important to them. Here's the one thing I have learned. People are people. Everybody wants the same thing. They want safe communities. They want, uh, they want to raise their families. They want to have you know, a decent uh, a way of life. Uh, in the most peaceful, serene country in the world. A better future right? for my kids so or our kids. Absolutely. So we all want the same thing. How we can get um, diverse communities uh, working closer uh, together is, is, is a challenge we're going to have to keep working on. I've, I've been giving some thought and we are looking at, at some interfaith type uh, work that we could, uh, we could look at doing getting organizations together. But I gotta tell you, I'm quite amazed when I go to various community functions and so on where there is immense diversity and people all talking and sharing the same values and concerns. I think there's a lot of it going on, maybe not in a formal way, but in an informal way of groups that are talking uh, talking to each other, of religious leaders in different faith communities that have regular ongoing uh, interfaith dialogue, which which is good stuff. Um, I spend a fair bit of time getting out to churches and mosques and, and, and other uh, temples and so on. And, and same thing, going to the services, learning more about what uh, they are, what they stand for. And again, what I find is, is most of these religions are very much the same. They're all built on respect thy neighbor, love thy neighbor, peace, responsibil personal responsibility. Uh, that's what makes Canada great. And that's why all these communities can live in harmony within Canada, because we really all do share those same values. Every week we have different uh, diverse religious events. We had Coptic Easter, yep. we had yep. the regular Easter, we had Basaki, so it's Correct. an ongoing yeah. process. That's right. we could there's, go always on. So, there's always something going on. That's, That's the other great thing about it. Especially living is, in the GTA, is, yes. Is we, we have, I mean, we've got a, lo a real eclectic opportunity to be involved and to attend things. I mean, as you say, I learn more every single day about different cultures and, and I missed backgrounds. And missed, missed out Passover, by the way. And so. well, that's <laughs> right. And we had Passover. I mean, I went to the uh, Coptic church on uh, Easter Eve for their for their service. I was at uh, the Sikh Gudwar in Malton uh, yesterday uh, celebrating uh, both uh, Vasaki as well as um, the 30th anniversary of uh, uh, the Punjabi uh, TV and radio station and, 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 and 
giving them a um, I an, saw award, you it. an award on behalf of uh, Minister Gosel, who unfortunately was was away on business with his ministry. But uh, I was delighted to go. It wasn't. It's not in my riding, but it didn't matter. I wanted to go to celebrate with the seat community on this this great thing that they've had 30 years of, of running a TV and radio station where it must have started with nothing and look how important and your show and others how important these media are for uh, for communities to keep in touch with what's going on in their country of origin but as well celebrating Canadian life but but it, through their own lens and, and that's a good thing I don't think that weakens Canada at all I think it makes us stronger as a country that we that we live our Canadian life, but we also can celebrate our history and our origin from whatever part of the world and whatever religious background we have. That's the beauty of Canada, that we all are allowed to follow our Canadian dream and everybody has a different dream. Exactly. Having said that, before wrapping up this interview for today, I would like you to give some message out to the youth and communities in general and whatever your heart tells you to say. All right. Well, listen, I, as you say, I want, I want to say to young people again is, is look at me as an example, okay? I, nobody dragged me in to volunteer for something. I decided that I wanted to make a difference in my community. So I took the step of volunteering. And, you know, I say this at, when I go to citizenship court ceremonies. I say this all the time when I'm asked to speak. When you give back to your community, it can be something as small as just helping out the person that lives right next door to you, that's volunteering. That's building character and mentoring as a young person. Or you can volunteer to be involved in all kinds of not-for-profit organizations that are doing great work on the ground. If you're a young person who, who um, speaks several languages but is really good in English, you could maybe be helping someone else in your community improve their English so it's better for them to live in Canada and, and, and contribute. You can volunteer to, April is, is Cancer Month, you can volunteer. There was a young person outside of the grocery store on, on Sunday that I saw uh, who was just selling, you know, the daffodils outside for Canadian Cancer Society. Something as small as that you can do to give back. And what it does is, this is the other thing I learned about volunteering in the community as a young person. It also opened up doors to my first employment. Because employers, anybody can graduate university and have a resume and hope to have their first job, but employers are looking for someone who stands out. And if they can see in your resume that not only you qualify to do the job, but you've shown that you've given something back to your community, you volunteered, you served on a community board, you, you were on the Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee, you, whatever it is that you did, that's going to set you apart from the hundred other applicants that have applied for that job, and it makes you a better citizen. So my message to young people is get involved. There's nothing holding you back. doesn't mean you have to go to boring three-hour meetings once a month. There's lots of volunteering you can do that makes a real difference on the ground to people, and I would encourage young people to step up. They can find out this through all the social media we talked about, opportunities to participate. And the last thing is participate in the political process. I don't care what political party it is, it doesn't matter what your background is, municipal, provincial, federal, school board, it doesn't matter. Get involved, work for candidates, learn more about it, and then maybe consider yourself one day being a candidate as well. Because we need young people in politics, we need young people serving at all levels of government to make this country uh, even greater, and we need them to take an active role in that. So I encourage young people to stay involved to keep involved and to do as much as you can to give back. Thank you, sir. Signing off from MP Brad Butt's office in Mississauga Streetville, the message is each person does make a difference. You matter, and you only matter if you come out and get involved. Please do that. Thank you very much once again. Thank you God very much, my friend. Nice to you. Same to you.